In today's tutorial, let's do the daisy plain dishcloth. Let's not judge the picture because there's a little bit more fabulosity within this pattern. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. In today's tutorial, we're going to work on the Daisy Plain dishcloth. Now, when I printed this out, I thought this dishcloth was more flat than it is because it's really hard to tell within the photograph. And so I did a sample just to see what it looks like. You'll be very surprised. So let's put these down and show you what the sample looks like. So you will notice here that it has a lot of raised bumps on it, and you will notice that it looks really quite nice and strategic. So if you're really looking for a dishcloth that can do some scrubbing and is not so flat this is the way to go. I actually have a secret project that I'm not going to tell you about in this tutorial that I'm working on to make it even more cooler. So within the kitchen you're going to need a lily sugar and cream if you're in the United States but if you're here in Canada you can use the Bernat Handicrafter in order to make this. Now this is the total width of this and if you really get a good idea of it this is really wide. So I'm going to teach you how to make a smaller version. I think it's a little too wide in my opinion and I would make it a little bit smaller because that's just the kind of person I am in the kitchen. So I will be able to teach you that as well but of course you can follow the pattern and make it more useful for you. In today's pattern you're going to notice that there's a repeat of four rows and they are rows two, three, four and the fifth row is repeating row three. And you're gonna do that because what you're gonna notice here is that you can see that you got a raised bump here and then it skips one and then a raised bump here. You will notice in the next one here is that the raised bumps are in between. Okay? So because of that it has to have a different uh, set of instructions in order to do that. So every time you get four rows done it just repeats back to what we had started off with before. The nice thing about this particular pattern is that you're gonna think to yourself oh that's a little inconvenient but the reality is is that every other row is just a single crochet straight across. So it makes it really quite simple. So what happens on this pattern? The other side is completely flat. So all of the bumps appear in the front side of this project and this is one of those things that I never noticed in the picture. Even though I know it now it's still hard to see. So this is one of those gems in a pattern. So let's begin and I'm gonna teach you how to customize this for yourself. In today's pattern I'm using a five millimeter size H crochet hook today in Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. Let's begin with a slip knot. Now it says in the pattern to chain 44. So if you want to follow the pattern exactly as it states and get that large size that you saw then that's up to you. If you would like to customize it you have to keep it an even number. So I'm gonna do a smaller sample just to prove this to you. So I'm gonna only do 12 because that's an even number. So one, two, three. I'm just chaining four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And now because I have an even number I'm good to go. So this is just one of those really kind of a, a neat idea. Let's begin row number two or row. So let's begin row number one. In row number one it says one single crochet second chain from the hook and one single crochet in each of the chains. So looking under here you go one and then go to the second turn it over and get the back hump only or the back and just single crochet. And single crochet once you do the first one in the back the chain stays turned over and you can see the next one is available to you. So just single crochet all the way across even if you're doing the big size uh, just single crochet all the way across just like I'm showing you here. And let's then I'll move up to row number two. So I'm at the end of the row I'm just gonna turn my work and let's begin row number two. So this is the repeat pattern. Okay so rows two, three, four and repeating row three is the repeat. Okay of the four. So here's the first part. So we're gonna chain one and we're gonna single crochet into the very first one right underneath. Then what we're going to do is that we are going to do one treble in the next single crochet. So in the next one we're gonna do a treble. So we wrap the hook twice and insert it into the next stitch pull through, pull through two and two and two. So you'll notice that it's much bigger. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna single crochet in the next one. And by doing that it's gonna fold it over and push and create a bump on the opposite side of the work. So the next one is a treble. So every other one is just a treble and the ones in between are just a single crochet. That's all this pattern is. So I'm just continuing to treble when I need to and single crochet in between. So that's what's creating those bumps. So it's not really a big deal. So I wanna make sure I get right to the end of the work and because I had you do it um, just in an 
even number when we started the chain it will work out. So the one right before the, so you got two left, so one and two, so the one before is a treble. And the very last one is a single crochet. And that completes off row number two. So you're gonna turn your work and turn it and you will see all the bumps are on this side. So this is gonna be row number three which will repeat every other row. So let's begin row number three. So row number three is a very easy row. So we're just chain up one and one single crochet into the first one and you're going to do one single crochet in each of the stitches. Now you're going to notice the treble looks like it's coming back. So I just turn it around a little bit. You can see the stitches are right there. So when you, you're looking at it from this point of view you probably don't see it but just remember that you just kinda gotta dive in from the top to get that stitch and you're just single crocheting. Okay, so you just dive in. You will get used to that if you're new to crochet and if you're experienced to crochet you're just automatically looking for that anyway. So you're just gonna do one single crochet all the way across. So this is row number three which we'll repeat again after we finish the next row which is gonna be row number four. Okay, so we single crochet right to the end. So let's turn our work and then go for row number four. So in row number four what's gonna happen is that we're going to shift these bumps. So the, the first shift is going to be that the bumps is gonna be starting a little bit later and it's going to be finishing a little bit sooner. Okay, so the bumps will appear in between. Okay, so they're not right in the end and etc. So let's get started. So we're gonna chain one and we're gonna do one single crochet in this stitch and in the next stitch. Okay. And now we're gonna start to, to, to do the treble to do the bump. So we're gonna treble and let's go right into the next one. And then the next stitch is a single crochet. So you already know how to do that. It's just a matter of starting off differently. Okay, so every other one is a treble and the ones in between are a single. So the trick here on this row number four is that you have to finish a little bit sooner with these trebles so that the final two stitches end up being two single crochets or one single crochet each. So I have two stitches left and I have a uh, treble here which worked out. So the final two stitches are going to be a single crochet. So when you turn your work you'll notice that the bumps again started later and finished sooner than the rows that you saw below. So let's uh, turn our work and go for row number three again. So what do we do for row number three? We just simply, I've already turned my work by the way. We're gonna chain one and we're gonna single crochet across. Okay, so this is a very easy row. So the ones with the trebles kind of make it a little bit of a slower pass across but then you got a nice holiday in the next row with just single crochets going all the way across. So it's one of those where you got a little bit of work in one row and then just blazing across in the other. So you can watch TV in this particular row. So I'm gonna repeat and show you the steps all over again. Okay, so that was rows number two, three, four and repeating rows number three. So let's turn our work and go for row number two again. So we're gonna chain up one, single crochet in the first. So in row number two we start the treble in the next stitch. And then single crochet in the next and then continue to repeat that all the way across. So treble, single crochet. If you haven't already figured it out by now is that when I say treble it's the Americanized treble. It's not the uh, UK version of treble. So you're gonna continue to do this and your last treble will be on this stitch right before the end. Okay. That's your last treble and the last stitch is just a single. That was a repeating of row number two. So you can see here in the last rows here, see these are shifted in. These are now brought back out. So you can see that there was a total of five bumps out. This one only has four. This is five again. So let's uh, chain up one and repeat rows number three. So row number three is just one single crochet in each going across. So you could make like mini scrubbers. You could do um, these two back to back and because the other side's flat you could just uh, put them back to back with each other and sew around or just do a single crochet around and you can have an extra thick scrubby if you wanted to. 
going right to the end. Okay, let's turn our work and go for row number four. Do you remember what to do? We chain up one and the first two are going to be single crochets and then we start the treble. Okay, and then single. And we keep repeating those two all the way across. But what's happening on row number four? If you remember we have to stop and make sure that we have two single crochets in a row at the very end. And how do, how would you remember that? Well if you continued along this will be a single crochet. You'll never have a treble on the outside. So I have two left and then they're just gonna be single crochets each. Turn our work and we have to repeat row number three once again. So chain up one and one single crochet into each. See that? So this is a really quite an easy pattern to do. And uh, there is no border around this but again that's up to you if you would like to. And if you want to um, put up a hanging loop you can. So right at the end if you wanted to do that. So you're just gonna keep continue to go. If you want a hanging loop right at the end just chain 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Attach it with a single crochet to the beginning and then fasten off and then you would have your hanging loop for your, your cloth there. Okay, so that's how you do this one. This is the Lily Sugar and Cream yarn and this is featuring the Daisy Plain Dishcloth. Again, there's a lot going on in this cloth and you, you'll have a lot of fun with it and I think it's a really cool idea. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a super day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.